Welcome to another episode of The Latest with Maya. Today, I am very excited to be having a conversation with actor Sasha, Sasha Royce. Um, thank you so much for being on my show. I am so excited to be talking with you. I'm excited to be talking with you as well. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's get started. You played um, Captain Sean Renard in Grimm, which I am completely obsessed with that show. Great. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, were you a fan of the Grimm fairy tales before the show? Um, I knew probably like most people, I just knew a handful. And um, I do love old fairy tales. I do like how dark and, you know, foreboding they can be. Um, very different from what, you know, the kind of fairy tales we read to our kids yeah. these days. But yeah. um, when we when we embarked on the show, we all picked up the complete stories, you know, of, uh, of the Grimm brothers. And uh, there's a reason why you only know a handful of them, because the others are so strange and so dark. And, you know, they involve yeah. donkeys and sausages and all sorts of weird combinations of uh, characters. But yeah. um, but we did uh, I think we did a nice job paying homage to the the the, uh, the stories themselves and the kind of feeling of those stories. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you um, first started. Um, reading them were you surprised by how dark the original fairy tales are very i was yeah. very surprised it's it's kind of remarkable i think you and i briefly spoke on that where it's um i guess we just didn't filter things for kids back then so much you know they uh <laughs> they're meant to be allegories they're meant to be sort of these uh you know tales cautionary tales but uh they go a little dark very quickly yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, I think our show definitely captured that darkness. And I think one of the surprises for us was much like these fairy tales were intended for children. Um, we were very surprised, at least the cast was that, uh, our show resonated so much with kids and families. Like we initially thought it would be more of an adult, young adult kind of fairy tale story. And then quickly realized that families were tuning in every week and loving it and watching it, you know, with parents and kids are watching it together, both deriving a lot of pleasure from it, which was a wonderful surprise. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, um, I have uh, wanted to watch uh, Grimm for a long time, but it was, I, because I knew it was very dark and yeah. um, my, mom had watched it when it was on and she was like I think it would really scare you so I waited for a little bit and just started watching it um a few months ago or and how do you find it now where it not too scary no I still find it creepy <laughs> it's pretty creepy right yeah, yeah. I know I know I, I was I surprised can't... how many young kids would come up to us and be like you're watching it at this age because I, I found it pretty creepy sometimes and pretty gory as well yeah I can't watch it when like it gets dark outside <laughs> I'm, I'm like this is a daytime <laughs> show that I have to watch yeah that's probably <laughs> a good idea that's probably a good idea yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah my um mom and my sister were very surprised when I said how much I love the show because I don't like I don't really like dark things and I can't really do gore so <laughs> it was, they were very surprised that I just was a, became obsessed with it so <laughs> I mean it's pretty it's pretty um it's funny because I, I, I know what you mean. And, and yet people seem to kind of like have the same uh, impression when they first get going and then they kind of fall in love with the world and the characters. And yeah. I think the characters keep it light uh, yeah. and fun in an otherwise really dark and sinister world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So um, I am a pop culture obsessed and I go in stages of shows that I cannot stop watching. 
And so, as I mentioned, I am obsessed with Graham and also just finished watching Suits, which oh, okay. we're into. Yeah. Um, what show are you currently obsessed with? Oh, that's a great question. Um, what am I obsessing with? I've been falling behind a little bit on my shows, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up with movies these days. I've been, um, I'm not the best TV viewer. I've been like watching movies and reading a lot these days, trying to catch up on some books and stuff. But, um, you know, I'll, let me circle back to that because I always blank. You know, I'm, I'm so lame when it comes to TV. I'm, I'm like obsessed with Jeopardy of all things. Like I like, <laughs> <laughs> I still love Jeopardy ever since I was a kid. But um, yeah, let me, let me circle back. I'm just trying to think, what's the last show that I finished watching? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how do you keep yourself motivated to create even on days when you aren't fully feeling it? That's a great question. Uh, you know, we just came out of a writer's strike. Yeah. And so we've been like out of work for months. And so that was very challenging for a lot of us, right? Because you're trying to stay busy and stay creative. And so like I was telling you, I've been reading a lot these days and catching up on a lot of um, books and plays. Um, I'm in New York, so I actually attend a lot of theater, I attend a lot of performances, and that really recharges me and kind of like fills my cup. Um, I travel, I, you know, I definitely, um, I'm trying to create, I have a couple of projects myself that we're pushing forward, you know, scripts that we've co-written and are trying to get produced. So, you know, different ways of trying to get your creative juices out and, and, um, and to stay connected uh, artistically. But it, it can be challenging. I mean, I think the definitely when I talk to young actors, the thing that I often say is, you know, it's not really how you spend your days when you're working. That's easy. It's when you're not working, what are you going to do then? How are you going to, you know, occupy your time and stay creative? And that's, that's, that's always like a, a really interesting and challenging exercise. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, um, I was actually just in New York. Um, oh, okay. I went, yeah, my family and I went for all of our birthdays because our birthdays are very close together. So when's your birthday? So my my sister and I are twins. So our birthday is um, October sixteenth, and then our mom's is October nineteenth. We're so, very close. Our birthdays. Mine is October twenty first. Oh, cool! Happy belated yeah, yeah. belated happy birthday. And to you too. We're both Libras. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did um, you see anything while you were here? Yeah, we um, we went to we saw our first Broadway show, which was incredible. Um, what did you see? We saw the new musical Gutenberg. I saw it too. Wasn't it hysterical? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> I know. I love those guys. They're yeah. remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually, um, I've interviewed Andrew a couple times, so Did it you? was, yeah, so it was really fun um, to see him, and then we went to um, a taping of Saturday Night Live, or not a taping since it's live, but we went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who was the host? Bad Bunny. Very nice. Yeah. So you had a really great trip, I see. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. So, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. And there was one day we were just walking down the street. And I was like, see, this is my New York, like, rom-com dream. Just, like, walking down the street yeah. with, <laughs> with, like, a coffee. And <laughs> yeah, so. it's it's a pretty magical city. I know I just moved here myself recently. I was in LA for a very long time and just relocated here. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah I, I also love LA. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what small things bring you joy on a daily basis? Um, I love my friends and I love connecting with people. Um, I love being outdoors. 
and exercise and walking and um, discovering new things. I travel quite a bit, you know, that like that really feeds me as well, like discovering new cultures and places, reading, um, being creative, you know, like when I have opportunities to like act and, and just be creative, that, that always brings me joy. You know, sometimes little things like my dog, flowers, like just, you know, everyday things, a good cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so who has had the biggest impact on you professionally? Oh, wow. Uh, professionally from people I met or just in general? Um, I'm not, uh, yeah. In, in general, in general, or, I mean, uh, like whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, um, a variety of people at different stages of my life. I was, um, I was a young kid in Montreal. I grew up in Canada in Montreal. And at that time I was a very, and I still am a huge uh, admirer of Leonard Cohen, the great poet and, and songwriter. Uh, he was like this, you know, small town boy who did good and got out and just kind of like left an impression on the world. And I always admired him from a young age. Um, as an actor, I just kind of loved a lot of the, uh, the great English theater actors, you know, like, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. I think you interviewed Patrick Stewart. I think I saw that. I and did, yeah, yeah, like people like that. When I was like a young student at the theater school and I studied in London, um, those were people I really admired, you know, their body of work. I'm currently reading like Judy Dench's latest biography and um, memoirs. Um, there's, there's so many great actors out there that I admire and directors as well. But um, yeah, I just, I, I, um, I think I, I was definitely, um, you know, influenced by a variety of things, like from musicians to actors to writers, painters, like the, the list is very long, but it's, it's, uh, it just depends on my mood who kind of like activates me, you know? Cause I think like when it comes to any medium, it doesn't really matter what you're drawing from. There's influence and impact and inspiration from anything, right? A song could inspire ideas for an actor, a painting can inspire you to do something like, so it's kind of like uh, very diverse, but as far as like um, actors that I love, I mean, a lot, I think just a lot of the, you know, the, um, a lot of the, the, the sort of like veteran actors that I grew up with um, watching and admiring, like some of the ones I mentioned, that, so many, many, many others. But yeah, I, I kind of like, um, you know, I have a few of my idols, like I mentioned, Leonard Cohen is one of them and some great painters, some great writers. But it kind of changes. It's a moving target a bit. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. So um, who has had the biggest impact on you as a person? Oh, my parents, for sure. Yeah, my parents had a, a huge impact on me. You know, my parents were immigrants and they had uh, two immigrations uh, in their life and um, really sacrificed a lot for my brother and I and inspired me to like take risks. Like I probably would never become an actor had it not been for watching them. They, I don't think they even realized at the time that they were kind of like Im imbuing me with this um, the sense of courage because watching what they had to go through made my decision seem so trivial in comparison. And so my parents, definitely their journey and, and, uh, and their support for me has been massively influential. Um, and then some wonderful people along the way, teachers and uh, that I've had like um, as a student, like throughout, you know, my theater school years and, and subsequently, um, were highly influential as well. People who kind of like helped me figure out who I was and not, not be small, not be like, um, not hide who I am, but to like bring it forward and to, you know, to apply it in my life and in, in, in art as well. Like, to, cause that's what you need to do. You need to really bring your, your true self forward. And that's hard sometimes in our world. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so what lessons from your childhood have most impacted your worldview? What lessons? Um, 
Well, you know, I, I myself was an immigrant. We, my parents and I came over to Canada when I was about six years old. And um, I think when you come over uh, or when you're not inherently from a place, um, you always feel like a little bit of an outsider. And you always feel like you're trying to fit in. And so I think that is really of all the things that I've experienced in my life. And a lot of them have obviously influenced who I am. Um, that initial sort of sense of being an outsider probably is what lent itself to me becoming, you know, um, an actor or a, an artist, because you're always trying to kind of express yourself and find a way to kind of connect with people um, because you felt so kind of out of place initially. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mom has always taught me since I first got sick when I was little that there's like no matter how bad the situation is there's always some sort of joy to be found um so that's always I've always tried to like do that no matter how bad the situation it's always find something that makes me happy and to be yeah. happy about, so that's amazing that's amazing and you learned that lesson you know uh, through difficulty and through having to overcome difficulties and it's it's but it's really a tremendous lesson to learn so early because many of us don't learn it at all and it's, yeah. it's it's a wonderful way to go through life so good on you yeah well, thank yeah. you yeah um so what is the best song to describe your life right now oh my god <laughs> my life right now um gosh you really you're really surprising me with these ones um i i listen to so much music and so it's so hard to like distill it into one song what is my life right now that's a really interesting uh maybe uh maybe david bowie's changes you know there's a lot of a lot of like a lot of changes going on right now in my life a lot of you know big big choices and and big um uh, seismic changes that are going on within me and outside of me. And so maybe that one. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good song. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is your proudest accomplishment so far? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of my friendships and my family. It's, it's something I've always invested heavily into. Um, and you know, they, sustain me but I think independent of that the thing I'm proudest of is my work with the uh, Dornbecker Children's Hospital while we were in Portland filming um, the cast and I got very very engaged with the Children's Hospital we would first attend and visit and, and try to kind of you know like bring some comfort and some uh, distraction to the kids of the hospital and then eventually we built a an endowment uh, called the Grimster Endowment based on the, the the name of the fans, our fan base. And we held three galas over the years and we had multitude of sponsors from Nike to you name it, like the whole city really came in to support us. And by the time we left Portland, we left this beautiful um, gift that uh, is now the biggest endowment in the hospital's history. It's worth several million dollars and it brings a lot of help to uh, families in need. You know, as, as, you, as you well know, like there's a huge toll on families financially uh, as they deal with like illness, you know, their children's illnesses. And so it's just to help them, give them a little bit of a reprieve from, from all that stress and all that difficulty. And it's something I'm, I'm really proud of that we, that we left this beautiful gift to Portland, which is a city that gave us so much and we were able to give back. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that uh, that's just, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still engaged with them. I still, I'm proud to say I'm a board member still to this day. And, you know, we try to, to, to remain as engaged as I can. And, and, uh, but it, it gave me more than I gave it. It was really a, a, a wonderful experience. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, what is something that people are always surprised to learn about you? That I'm a nice guy. 
because <laughs> I because I play all these baddies on TV yeah. often. Uh, I think Suits, who you mentioned, was one of the one of the only roles where I was just a nice guy, you know, uh, which which made my mother immensely happy. She goes, "Oh, finally, yeah. I could finally see you smile on television." Um, <laughs> but most of the time, I'm always playing these sort of devious, you know, diabolical characters, and people meet me and they're like, "Oh, you're actually kind of nice." I was like, "Yeah, no, it's I'm just pretending." Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I think people are always surprised that I'm actually tall in real life. And I'm like, well, you know, that 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 yeah. the camera's pretty accurate. I was tall on TV, I'm tall in life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um when you have a day off, uh what would your perfect day look like? Oh, perfect day. Well, it's it's kind of like a beautiful fall day like today. Um, you wake up and get a coffee and have some beautiful sunshine, walk around, have my little dog with me, you know, maybe meet up with a friend, um, get in some exercise, get in some reading, maybe catch a play. I mean, just a perfect New York autumn day is like heaven for me. Oh, walk through the leaves that. as I did this morning. Yeah. It's, it's kind of magical. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the autumn and winter are like my favorite seasons. So that oh, really? just, yeah, always makes me like in the fall, just walking through, like as all the leaves are changing and falling down. Just I think it's because we're, we're autumn birthdays. I think we probably, it yeah. resonates with us. But yeah. it's true. Like I, I grew up on the East Coast and then I moved to LA and, and ended up living on the West Coast for, 15 years and and then I just realized how much I missed the fall like the smell of the fall the leaves changing of just wearing a couple of jackets and you know it's just it's it's such a beautiful time of year and like very reflective too which I enjoy yeah, yeah. um so what no matter how many times you see it always takes your breath away oh Wow, these are good questions, Maya. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, sunsets, really. Um, yeah, they're so like um, anywhere in the world, you know, you always kind of stop and just kind of stop in your tracks and just, you know, appreciate a sunset. Like it's always different everywhere you are, but still familiar. Um, the ocean, mountains, you know, pretty much, I think, landscapes and beautiful cities like when i'm in new york or in europe like i'm always so um thrilled you know just to to see the architecture or if i'm in the country like to see the landscapes like those things i never kind of take it for granted oh i love that yeah, yeah. so do you have a go-to um show or movie that you watch when like you just need to kind of tune out the world <laughs> <laughs> i think uh yeah i tend to lean towards comedy sometimes when i want to tune out the world so i'll you know i'll watch um anything from kind of just like silly comedies like the office which just like i appreciate just having a laugh or like things i grew up with like cheers you know like like old comedies um as far as movies like a lot of woody allen movies like always kind of make me smile like annie hall always makes me laugh over and over again um yeah i think uh, for comedies like typically some of those you know make me quite happy seinfeld um yeah i do i do like a, i do gravitate towards comedy more than <laughs> anything else yeah me too <laughs> yeah yeah i need it we all need a good laugh you know yeah definitely yeah um so what is your favorite way to procrastinate Oh, I'm really good at procrastinating, let me <laughs> tell you. Um, my favorite way to procrastinate is probably to kind of like, uh, well, let's see. Um, <laughs> sometimes you end up sitting on the phone a little too long, whether you're kind of scrolling through things or calling friends, yeah. um, you know, or, uh, you know, like watch a movie that I probably should get to work but i'm just gonna finish watching this movie or uh, you know I, I kind of um 
Yeah, I think typically it's it's trying to connect with people and just kind of taking my mind off the amount of work I have to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But eventually I get it done. But yeah, procrastination is it's definitely something that's haunted me for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm too good at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I definitely like watching Grimm. I definitely procrastinate a lot because I'm always just like, well, one more episode. One more then, episode. Yes, yeah. we've all said that. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, I well, know. now I need to see, find out what happens next. So one more. And then I know. I don't I know. get anything done. So. I've I've been there a lot. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I love inspiring and motivational quotes. And this week, my favorite quotation that I found is, and one day, just like that, you'll rediscover your light, you'll embrace your inner warrior, you'll grab your power back, and the whole game will change. Mm. Who's that by? I actually, I don't know. I found it on Instagram, so I'm not sure. <laughs> it's one of those... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, enigmatic Instagram quotes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I get, um, like, I go down the rabbit hole of just looking at quotes. I love good quotes. I love good, I never remember them, but I love good quotes. Yeah. 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 Um, is there a quotation that has inspired you lately? Many. Constantly, I'm I'm trying to think which one most recently. Um, there's a famous Shakespeare quote: "Nothing is but thinking makes it so," which I remember living by for a long time. That it's just all in our head. Um, I was in London recently, and I walked by um, one of my favorite um, little spots in uh, like near Trafalgar Square, and there's a um, there's a statue or commemoration of Oscar Wilde and he's kind of laying there on the street and the quote is um, I'm paraphrasing I think but all of us lay in the gutter but some of us look up at the stars and uh, I remember when I first discovered that one when I was like a young theater actor like it just made so much sense like we're all struggling but you know there's hope out there if you look for it yeah oh I love yeah. that yeah 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 um well it was so much fun talking with you i just had the best time and oh, i you. so appreciate you taking the time and of course it's my pleasure maya such a such a thrill to meet you and to chat with you and i so appreciate that you love grim <laughs> keep watching it with you know during the day with the curtains open yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> and let me know how how what you think of the ending. I will. Yeah, I uh, am actually when I first started it, and um, like we didn't really, you know, didn't reveal what your character's storyline was. I was yeah. like, think he's a bad guy. I was just like my mom <laughs> was home, so she heard me right when like you discovered he was behind something. Uh -huh. I just like without even realizing it, I just went, it's always the police captain. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the police captain. I know he's an interesting, wily character, isn't he? He kind of yeah. goes in and out, good and bad. You never kind of know what he's up to. Yeah. But uh <laughs> yeah, no, we had a great time. We had a great time on that show. I'm so glad it resonates with you. And it's still like, you know, so much fun after all these years. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just obsessed with it. I can't stop watching it. So oh, I appreciate <laughs> that. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for reaching out to me. It's really been a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah, been I just I just so overwhelmed right now. I can't believe I'm talking with you. So oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Maya. I wish you the best and stay in touch, okay? Thank Enjoy you. the show. I'll thank talk to you thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. And that's a wrap on today's edition of The Latest with Maya.